Hi, welcome to a wet, uh, blustery day in Chesterfield. What we're going to have a look at today is part two of the preparation for winter, which again is a very uh, debatable subject and it can uh, wind some people up and it can set people upon a rampage, but again, it is personally down to your own choice, your own prerogative, your own circumstances and your own setup, and that is to uh, heat the pond or not. This is the UK, so yeah, okay, you don't really need to heat it. You don't have to heat it, you don't need to heat it. But if you want to heat it, if you like heating it, if you want to keep feeding your fish and enjoy the, uh, them through the winter and let them grow, etc., this is how I do it. It seems to be an efficient way, and the koi keep growing, they keep feeding as normal, and uh, I get to see a little bit more of them than what I normally would rather than sat lifeless on the bottom of the pond for five, six months. They're still active, they're still swimming around. You don't have to eat it, as I said, but if you do, it's best to have it covered and insulated. So I'll have a quick run through what I've got to eat the pond and I'll explain at the end of it what the benefits are to myself. Just checking the pond during the day. As the temperatures are still warm, I'll lift the uh, covers up just to give them a bit extra light and just to check on the fish. So on the warmer days, when I'm giving extra food as such. Like I say the bracky shower's covered. The temperature's sat around about 17, 18 degrees. We'll just we'll have a look at that and then we'll have a look at the uh, heaters. Heater. So here we are inside the filter house and excuse the junk and the spare hoses and pipes I've got tucked down there but you've got your uh, four inch drain that comes from the bottom of the pond comes under the floor through an elbow into that four inch double union ball lever valve under the filter system up another sweeping, sweeping 90 through that four inch double union ball valve in case I need to do any work or anything I've just overkilled it with a spare ball union valve then into the filter house filter there which is the ORZ Profi Clear compact premium compact then it comes out of the filter through another double ball union but it's an inch and a half that one through a sweeping S bend into the pump the pump is a Pond Expert Veriflow 20,000. That's controlled up there and it's running at about 60% at the moment. So the water then goes through the UV that I leave on through the uh, whole year. Change the tubes around about beginning of March time. That's an Evo 55. It's then got a short bit of pipe into the electro three kilowatt inline heater under that filter unit out the pond uh, out the wall of the filter house goes underground under gravel back to the pond we'll take a closer look at the electro and what i was planning on but unfortunately the covid and the uh, furlough has put a stop to it was I was going to fit in there where that is a air source heat pump there's plenty of space at the back to wall mount it and I could have the fittings on this side and it is remotely operated so I wouldn't need to go on to the other side but due to cash flow and furlough that's going to be on the next year's project so we'll take a closer look at the heater but as you can see it's a three kilowatt 13 amp electro heat inline heater and it is an electro aquatic heater because they do two different types they do the aquatic and the swimming pool and I think if I'm right the swimming pool doesn't quite uh, uh, like being in a pond setup due to the treatments and the uh, other bits and bobs but either way this is the electro and it works well it's got a flow valve on the right hand side so if it senses a low flow or no flow it will cut off it's got an analog uh, timer there 
and you can easily set the temperature by pressing the P up and down to whatever temperature you want. So basically it sits there nice and easy and I can either turn it on or off. But at the moment it's set at, there's a slight little bit of discrepancy between the temperatures. It's set to 18 but I think that's an actual uh, 17 degree readout looking at all the other uh, tests that I've done. On the newer Elecro with the digital display you can do a calibration of uh, plus or minus two degrees in case you get a differential in the temperature it's set at and the temperature is actually hitting. But either way that's what we've got and it goes out through the wall back to the pond. That's the skimmer line that comes up from underneath and into the filter unit there which again is a Pond Expert 20,000 Spin Clean Auto. The power supply for the Electro 3 kilowatt is on a separate setup. It's there. It's on a 16 amp uh, rogue tree isolator that goes straight back to the main consumer board in case I had a, a larger heater or anything. It's on its own supply. It doesn't go through any of the Matsukos. On the Matsukos, I've just got the air pump, filter pump, UV, and the main bottom drain filter on this one and on this one I've got nothing on there I've got the uh, second pump for the skimmer the air pump for the uh, pond bottom drain the lighting outside and the filter unit so I can switch them all on there I can have more time about the Matsukos but well, that's a different video we'll go through that one later just on a just on a background of my pond when I did the rebuild, which you can check out on one of the other videos, probably this one, you'll see that when I built it, uh, apart from having the blocks 9 inch wide, I also had some 25mm uh, Kingspan insulation boards all around the outside, and I also had 50mm uh, Kingspan insulation boards on the bottom. All the pipe work that returns to the pond is insulated, and the bottom drain return goes underground, is insulated and goes underground. The skimmer return goes via the backy, and as you've seen on the previous video, that is uh, boot aisle insulated, weatherproofed, and then the box is uh, the backy shower is insulated as well with 25mm Kingspan. Again, that all helps keep the running cost down of the, the pond. Being in the UK, again, we don't have massive issues but if we do it's only for two three days so you can just get away with not covering your pond you can just cover your pond or if you want to continue with a few bits and bobs you can cover the pond and heat it i heat it to 17 degrees the pond will sit between 16 and 17 degrees comfortably and it will allow me to feed the fish as normal so they'll still have their two hourly feeds it allows me to treat the pond if I've got any poorly fish with any sores or anything which I do have and I may treat them uh, occasionally. It also allows the healthy bacteria in the filter system to continue producing and doing the work as such and it allows me to on days like this sit and look at the pond and watch the fish have a close look as they're swimming around. They're not going to sit lifeless in torpor uh, at the bottom of the pond, get sores or uh, any carp pox. It's again it's a personal choice and as you've seen this is how I insulate and how I uh, heat mine. There are some videos that I did online to check the heating costs. Again I think they're about there somewhere but what I did on that I had some industrial data loggers that I looped around the live feed for the heater only and then set it running for two weeks and it did a record in every 30 seconds for two weeks of the electricity that was used and then it gives a calculation if you put your uh, uh, household electricity rates in, it puts the calculations together and it works out that it cost me £2.22 per day to heat the pond. Again, it's personal choice, to some that's peanuts, to some that's uh, uh, cost of, uh, it's costly, especially when you work it out over five months, or £15 a week or whatever it is, uh, or uh, £50 a month. It, it can soon add up depending on how you look at it, but I don't smoke, I don't go out drinking that often, uh, I like to, uh, I'm a bit of a family man, I like to stop at home with the, with, with the youngster and the missus and this is my uh, vice, this is my uh, sin. So 
I can afford it. I'm in a position where I can afford it and that's what I want. But you don't have to. So don't get bullied. Don't think you need to. Don't think you need to follow any of the forums or the uh, statements on Facebook or whatever group you're looking at. It's down to personal choice. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and check out some more videos. But most of all, thanks a lot. Happy Ponding.